Good evening and welcome to another edition of Transfer Talk with our man Greg Stobart. How are you doing Greg? Very good, thank you Jack. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, uh, not much news today regarding sort of signings coming in, but what have we got bubbling in the... Uh, in the cauldron at the moment. Well, I said to you earlier, Jack, and I don't think you're very happy. I said <laughs> I'm not actually expecting Tottenham to do anything this month. Um, a few people at the club have been saying for a while that it's going to be a quiet window. If there's a deal to be done, they'll do it. But the thing with Pochettino in particular is he doesn't want to sign any players for the mm. sake of it. I think fans can understand that, but when you look at the striker situation, it is frustrating. But maybe something in the last week or so of the window, but genuinely now they are saying don't expect anything to happen. Well, I mean, there'll be a lot of people out there. People out there definitely will be getting very impatient with what's going on. It's clear, especially from the last game, that Kane's looking knackered. We need a striker. That very much is true. So, you know, people that we've been linked with, the likes of Berahino, have you got any updates about side of Berahino at the moment? Berahino wants to come. I don't think that's a secret. And Tottenham know they need a striker as well, Jack. Let's not forget. They tried to sign Berahino last summer, they were looking at some other players as well. Mm. It's more a matter of who's available, who's quality and who Pochettino wants in the team for the long term rather than the next six months. Berahino, I think, if he had a choice, he would want to go to Tottenham. Mm. The problem is he's barely played for the last five or six months. Relations between Tottenham and West Brom, Jeremy Peace and Daniel Levy, as we know, not very, not good. very good at all. Um, Spurs aren't going to want to pay more than 13 to 15 million for him. And with his agent Stella desperately trying to get him out of West Brom, he wants to go to the Euros in the summer. Mm. There are some other clubs sniffing now. And Tell us who those other clubs are. I don't think you'll be that surprised, people. I think he's going to go to Chelsea. Um, <laughs> that would be, my money would go on Chelsea now. Uh, that could change. Yeah. Chelsea need a striker. I think Remy's going to leave Chelsea probably as well, if they can get Berahino in. It if sense. Remy leaves Chelsea, is there a chance of us getting in there, do you think? No, not? Chelsea won't deal with us at all. I mean, people talk about the bad blood between the Tottenham board mm. and the West Ham board. The worst is with Tottenham and Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea away is the only game that Daniel Levy doesn't go to because he can't stand the board there. So that's just Don't not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Don't blame him. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously you say that Sido Berahino probably end up going to Chelsea. It's just a massive shame. It's to not impossible honest. that he'll come to Spurs, but I can't see the finances working. I don't think Spurs are pushing it particularly hard. And I don't think he's done himself too many favours with no. his attitude in the last well, year. Well, like, you know, Poch, Poch is saying that um, he doesn't want anyone to come in and disrupt the, 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 the good vibes at the club at the moment. Do you personally think that bringing in, if things were to work in our favour, Levy was willing to pay that few extra million more, Chelsea don't put a bid in, and would you ever see him come into the club? Yeah, I can see him coming. He wants to come. Spurs like him as a player and he's got a good relationship with Kane. I think that was one of the big things when they looked for him in the summer. Yeah. If you look at those under-21 games when they played together, they were brilliant together. Yeah. You can, I think when you see... You could just imagine it, couldn't you? Those two playing together uh, and exactly. linking up well. And, and what he does is he's skillful on the ball and he can get in behind and I think yeah. that's what we really need. Um, Son still likes to play in that little hole. And Jai, of course, injured for a while now. Mm. That's why they want Berahino, and that's why they've looked at those other players we've yeah. been talking about, like Bat Shawi, like Inaki Williams. Bit of power, someone who can get behind and do something special, yeah. special there. Because Kane, if he's got a fault, it's probably that he's so clever he can get away with it. But it's probably the lack of pace when you're looking to stretch a game. It was like Teddy Sheringham didn't have too much pace, but it, look at him—he was still a decent player, weren't he? I love Teddy. We all love Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you sort of um, briefly spoke about Inaki Williams there, so he's a player that we've been linked with, I've watched it, I don't know too much about him, I've watched him on YouTube, you know, he's one of these players that likes to drop deep, um, you know, he's skillful, he's good on the ball, works hard as well, which is which are all qualities of, in a player that Poch and Mitchell will look, sort yeah. of look for, but you don't think that that is going to happen? No, I've spoken to a couple of Spanish journalists and they agree with you, they say he's going to be pretty special mm. in Naki Williams, uh, very young as well, but it's the, it's the money again mm. with that. Um, Tottenham aren't entirely sure. I think they see this as his breakthrough season. Mm. Um, they'd like to see him do it for another year. The problem is Athletic Bilbao only ever sell for the buyout clause, which at the moment is 20 million euros after tax and up front. So if Tottenham were to sign someone like Berahino, usually they'd do a deal mm. in which they spend X amount, say half the, half the fee up front and then the rest split over the course of the contract. That's standard practice yeah. for most clubs, not just Tottenham. 
but for this deal they'd have to pay it all up front. I just don't think so they're not willing to do it this month, no. Shame. And also Batshuayi, you told me earlier that it probably looks a bit dead in the water because he's just signed an extension with Marseille. I don't think he ever had any intention of leaving in January. Um, Tottenham certainly want him, he'd, he'd be top of the list in a perfect world. Uh, but he want, he's playing every week for Marseille, he's playing well. And as we, we were saying off camera, the big thing for a lot of players in this transfer window is they want to play in the Euros. Mm. Uh, he can smash it for Marseille for six months. He's going to go to Bel to the Euros probably. So he's Bel ahead of Lukaku. He's ahead of Lukaku, so he's probably going to be their first choice striker. And having spoken to some people in Batshawi's camp, his plan is to play brilliantly at the Euros and then get a big move after the Euros. So he's not even one that you can wrap up yeah. in May ahead of the ahead of the summer. If he's going to move, it's going to be in July, probably July, August. So it's good business from Marseille, really, isn't it? I brilliant think. from Marseille. But if I, you know, if you, you can ask the guys, but if I was, a, if you're a Tottenham fan, and someone said, would you rather take a punt on someone for a Charlie Austin for 10 million in January or wait until the summer to potentially sign someone like that, shall we? I think most looking long term, looking at the way Tottenham are progressing, mm. Pochettino's methods and his ethos, as frustrating as it is, I think you'd rather have that, shall we? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Um, finally, um, obviously this first section is to do with the ins. But finally, we've got Sandro, Barcelona player Sandro. Now he's a player that I was really excited about. Um, you know, I was hoping this would happen. Although he's not an English forward, um, he, he looks exactly like the sort of player again that, that we would be looking for. Um, but again, you don't think that that's really going to sort of work out? Yeah. Um Sandro, a bit like Naki Williams, can play in a few positions, which is always useful. Mm. Another one who looks really good on YouTube and he's quick yeah. and got on the ball. Um, Tottenham definitely spoken to his camp quite a lot. They've offered him a four and a half year contract. Uh, the fee isn't that much, it's about nine million pounds because he's got a buyout clause, but there's a bit of difficulty. One, over tax, and two, with Barcelona wanting the buyback clause, and Tottenham simply don't want to do it. And I think what's happening now is Barcelona are trying to sign Nolito from Celta Vigo mm. and they're going to try and work Sandro into that deal so he can go and play a bit of football for them for yeah. a year or two and then go back to Barcelona. Uh, I wouldn't say that's dead in the water yet, but at the moment, it's looking, from what I've been told, it's unlikely. But yeah, okay, fair enough. So that's uh, all the, all the rumours um, sort of going around our inns. Um, make sure to um, like the video if you can. Uh, subscribe to us uh, at Spurred on TV on Twitter and give the video a like. So make sure to follow us in part two for the outs of the transfer window. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>